go. Go to your right and go. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about Pope Francis? <laughs> <laughs> inter-religious journey within ourselves and perhaps sometimes inter-religious journey to other people maybe here, maybe in the future but no grand plan action that we going to have but mostly a dialogue within ourselves and dialogue among us and dialogue with the others Basically our program here in Bode and the environs of the, the great stupa of Bodhanath which is one of the great pilgrimage centers of Mahayana Buddhism has many many advantages it's a very colorful area, which is something that immediately strikes anyone visiting for the first time. All the senses are stimulated. There's the color of bright robes and richly painted monasteries. There's the cloud of incense, uh, the sound of monks chanting, and of cymbals and gongs being sounded during the rituals in the monastery chapels. And, and it's all very, uh, all very beautiful, and as I say, very, very stimulating. <laughs> While on the surface, everything is so beautiful and colorful and cheerful and there's great diversity here, something like 15 ethnic communities uh, from around the, the Himalayan region have settled here. But it's also true that these are people who've experienced incredible hardship. They live a very Spartan, hard scrabble existence economically. For many of the Nepalis, they're internal migrants building a new life in the city. Mm -hmm. And of course for the Tibetans, they're people who are still living with the tragedy of having lost their homeland. And yet what's so striking to anyone who interacts with them is the profound faith of the people. And it's a profound faith that allows them to be cheerful and resilient in the space of these incredible hardships. samsara, uh, the world of illusion or impermanence, that to the Buddhists they look around and see everything in this world as constantly changing, that nothing is permanent, and that this lack of permanence is actually the root of all suffering, that all sentient beings, from the smallest uh, cockroach all the way to human beings or even divine beings, suffer because of this lack of permanence. And that's the fundamental insight of the Buddha, that the first noble truth, that there is suffering in the world. The second noble truth, that impermanence and attachment to this world of impermanence is the source of that suffering. And the third noble truth is that liberation is what we ought to be seeking, this freedom from suffering, freedom from this attachment, 
And the, finally, the fourth noble truth, that the Bodhisattva's way, the Eightfold Path, is the only way to free oneself from this world of impermanence. Although as a Christian, I don't believe in reincarnation. I see how the idea of samsara makes sense, because we have created structures that perpetuate sin, that make the rich become richer, and condemn the poor to be always at the margin of society. Or the word for suffering is that dukkha, or is there or dukkha? Are there are there other words for it? And then, uh, what is what is the meaning? Like, is that a good translation? Are there many other words? How would you express There's actually what a that lot means? Of discussion about that word because um, people say it doesn't so much mean overt suffering as general dissatisfactoriness. Mm -hmm. So that things just they, things are just like never right. Unsatisfactory. Things are never quite right. So even even if you're happy, you know, you're you're sitting here and you're doing what you want to be okay. doing, and you know, there's always some part of your brain that's going, oh, I should be doing this, or you know, like you're never completely content. So it's this sort of at all pervasive level of dissatisfaction. It also refers to not just overt suffering. So yeah, a lot of people say suffering is not a particularly good translation for cooking. I think there's a danger in, in, in saying like, oh, well, suffering is material, period, or suffering is emotional, period. And like that seems really naive and ignorant and like not true to my experience at least. Um, so yeah, within liberation theology specifically, I see how much we could learn from Buddhism and um, there's, yeah, this idea that there has to be a transformation of the mind if we're really going to stop the cycle of sin, because obviously when we're um, when we're unhappy, when we're living out of ignorance, it's not just that we're unhappy. We also then perpetuate new material, physical sin. Because if I think like, oh, I need all this money in order to be happy, then I'm going to live in such a way that probably prevents others from having the material that they need. Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Buddhism had said that non-virtue causes suffering. Mm -hmm. So it causes it for the person who's committing the non-virtue, but it also has a side effect of causing suffering for others too. Yeah. But the right religion coming because somebody is suffering, mm -hmm. and they have to figure out how to deal with this one. Then Christians and Buddhists and other religious tradition have different answers for that. When I came here, there were four schools. Now we have 32 schools. We have not reached Christianity. Total number of Christian population, Catholic population is 7,991. Nine person myself. <laughs> 991. That's the total population in Canada. But these are all people who are impressed by the service we give. So the Catholic Church is known as a community, at the service of others. Everywhere you are, you have love. Every place is the same. Come here, or go in the King's Palace. All human, all son and daughter of God. Finish the question. goodwill, especially people belonging to a faith tradition, uh, I think have the responsibility to model uh, respect and selfless love for the world. Um, the greatest evil isn't uh, suffering or death, it's the lack of love. And if religions can't get along and can't genuinely love each other, honestly love each other, then who can be saved, really? When I came to Nepal uh, uh, 25 years ago, the first thing I learned was Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> namaste. And I had one teacher, and he explained to me, you know, Namaste is a sign of welcome. Yes. 
वेलकम एंड फेयरवेल एंड थैंक यू एंड इट इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर सो मेनी थिंग्स एंड वन ऑफ द थिंग्स ही टोल मी व्हेन यू डू नमस्ते बोथ हैंड्स सपोज टू कम टुगेदर नो मैटर वेयर यू आर हैंड सर व्हेन यू आर डूइंग नमस्ते बोथ हैंड्स विल कम सो व्हाट इज हैपनिंग ही सेड यू आर ब्रिंगिंग द होल यूनिवर्स टुगेदर होल यूनिवर्स टुगेदर एंड आई सैल्यूट द डिविनिटी दैट इज विद इन यू Mm-hmm. the god's uh, god's part that is in you as a human being so i mm-hmm. i i adore you i respect you mm-hmm. i welcome you mm-hmm. to respect other religion is extreme not limited extreme so this immersion experience in Nepal uh with the Buddhist tradition um I I found the people there um very very open very hospitable and willing to share the riches of their personal lives and stories their spirituality um so freely with us and openly and uh in sharing that gift that enabled me also to be able to uh you know share something of the christian faith that uh we bring and to see the commonalities in the different traditions um and in that way strengthen sort of our relationship between the buddhist tradition and you know the christian tradition and also deepen Our friendship. Okay. Uh, and I'm Buddhist. Uh-huh. I'm going to church uh, 2000. 2000. Yeah. What happened? Uh, no, I go there. Why did you? In the Qatar. Why did you? Why did you no, shift? No. Yeah, yeah. Huh? I'm in the. Why yeah. did you change? No. Yeah, yeah. I'm Buddhist. then. I ask you. Oh. I'm then in the go in the Qatar. To Qatar. I job uh-huh. in the same like this driver. Ah, okay. Driving there. Yes. I'm very sick. Oh, this uh-huh. time. Yes. I go hospital. Uh-huh. In uh, uh, doctor in the every everyone in the checking. Yes. This I have uh doctor ask mm-hmm. you have no your your body in the good. Your your, bo- your health good. Mm. You everyone you not use in the your medicine like this. Mm. Okay. Mm. I'm This is the sun. This is the same time. Mm. I, I, my is the I. Uh, I was this thing in the blank. All blank. This. All blank. Yeah, yeah. My eye uh, in the blank. Oh wow. After. Like a coma. Uh, yeah. After my room, mm. one friend in the Christian. Okay. Uh, this Christian in the uh, India, go in the Goa. Okay. He went this to Goa. This is going back in the Nepal. Okay. Nepal mm. in the uh, this friend ask I pray you okay you like in the Jesus okay I like Jesus I pray <laughs> okay I am pray okay. this friend pray okay I am very good uh. okay I like in the Jesus like okay this. <laughs> I'm every day I go church wow there's this common misunderstanding in interreligious dialogue where people enter into it into it assuming that there's going to be similarities and maybe even from the desire that there will be similarities but what that ultimately can lead to is a contradiction of authentic interreligious dialogue where each party is projecting their beliefs onto the other as opposed to authentically meeting one another in their differences and i think the differences are really what can give um a fruit to the dialogue in itself well of course the similarities can be good but the differences can be equally as good if not even more enriching every single piece and part is in the awareness of god so for example he sneezes and his eyes close <laughs> boom metaphor <laughs> metaphor <laughs> <laughs> God needs needs then that that things will be displayed. Chacha never so good.
<laughs> how, how long do you keep time? So, so does uh, so God created everything. God gives everything life, right? Mm -hmm. So does God have life? God is He's God is life. life. Not that life who could. He is. He is. He is alive. He's He's Nobody created his life. No. 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 He is complete life. He's a good man, so you're soft. So, Chasa is so good to us. So, Chasa is Yeah. So, therefore, he did not create all life. All life. Except his. Except his. Except his. No, he doesn't create all life. Except his. Except his. He is life. So, you cannot say all life is created by the God. <laughs> if I understand that everything is impermanent, even love and compassion and happiness, uh, what, what should I practice love and compassion for others if I acknowledge that others don't have an existence in themselves like I don't either? Why should I strive to practice virtue and love and compassion? If I don't exist, they don't exist, and love and compassion and happiness are not permanent either. What prevents me from just abandoning myself to a void of non-existence? <laughs> So first, um, we have to really, uh, we have to understand the difference between this Buddhist concept of emptiness and complete voidness. There's a big difference between those two. And when we say something's not truly existent, we're not saying that it doesn't exist at all and it's just this empty, completely empty, nothing is void. We're not saying um, the traditional Buddhist example of uh, the horns, we're not talking about the horns of a rabbit which don't exist at all in any way whatsoever, right? So this idea of emptiness, this idea of not truly existent, doesn't mean that nothing exists at all whatsoever. The very different between emptiness and empty. Okay. So, um, why did God make Adam? Why did he make the first person? Did he make the first person under the power, under the sway of desire, <coughs> under the sway of... Uh, a foot to emotion, if you will. What was the reasoning? Why did he um, make the first person? He made my family. Ha 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 ha. Oh, why? Is it joke? <laughs> joke. So, so man, this I, all, all, all our uh, traditional we need to know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. <clears throat> And Michael said, did he, did he um, create based on a, uh, what type of virtuous motivation was it? Non-virtuous motivation? A neutral motivation? What was he, what was the basis of the motivation that he created? I mean, I can start here with the show. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm just looking, now, now look for something. Look at something, now, now you should go to make this moral. Mm -hmm. Now, you should go to make this moral. Now, you should go to make this moral. Now, you should go to make this moral. Kevin wants to make it clear that he, he just really enjoys learning. It, 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 we are too. I'm not judging you. Oh, no, we are too. We are, too. We are, we are, Me too. So, we love you. <laughs> we love you. <laughs>
Laudate Dominum, Laudate Omniscientes, Laudate Dominum, Laudate Omniscientes, Laudate I'm a new person. I already feel myself as a new person.